Imagine this. A loud siren blares through your city in five minutes. What do you do? Let's paint a picture. You're going about your day, maybe you're enjoying a cup of coffee, reading the morning paper, or just getting off a tiring day of work. Suddenly the air is filled with the deafening wail of a siren. Your heart skips a beat. It's not the usual wail of a passing ambulance or the distant blare of a fire truck. This siren is different. It's louder, more urgent, and it echoes through every corner of your city. You feel a chill crawl up your spine as the realization slowly creeps in. It's the siren nobody ever wants to hear, the one that signals the unthinkable, a nuclear threat. The end of the world as we know it could be just minutes away. You can feel the tension in the air, it's not just you, everyone else has heard it too. The bustling city has come to a standstill. Cars have stopped in their tracks, people have ceased their chatter, and all eyes are skyward, waiting, wondering. It's a scenario that's hard to fathom, isn't it? How do you react when every second could mean the difference between life and death? Do you run? Do you hide? But where could you possibly find safety in a world that's on the brink of annihilation? Or do you stand frozen, like a deer in the headlights, unable to comprehend the magnitude of what's about to happen? It's a question most of us would rather not contemplate, but it's a question that needs to be asked. Because in this hypothetical scenario, your actions, your decisions could make all the difference. We live in a world where the nuclear threat, while distant, is very real. We've seen the devastation it can cause. We've heard the stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We know the power that lies at the fingertips of those who hold the red button. And yet, we carry on, hoping that we'll never have to face that reality. But what if we do? What if that siren does sound? What if the end really is nigh? So you're faced with the end of the world. What's your move? Now, let's shift our focus to the cause of this hypothetical apocalypse. The red button. In the world of international politics and military strategy, there's a metaphor that's often thrown around. The red button. A symbol, a concept, an idea that has the potential to change the world as we know it in a matter of minutes. It's a metaphor for the decision to launch a nuclear attack, a decision that could potentially end the world. But what does this mean exactly? Who has the power to press this button? And what would the consequences be? In many countries with nuclear capabilities, the power to launch a nuclear attack lies with the head of state. In the United States, for instance, the president has the sole authority to launch a nuclear attack. Similarly, in Russia, the president holds this power. However, it's not as simple as just pushing a button. The decision to launch a nuclear attack is a complex one, involving numerous checks and balances, consultations with military and political advisors, and a thorough evaluation of the potential consequences. And the consequences are dire. A single nuclear attack could result in the death of millions of people, not to mention the long-term effects on the environment and the global political landscape. The fallout from a nuclear attack could last for decades, even centuries, affecting generations to come. But despite the dire consequences, the power to press the red button exists. It's a power that's held by a select few individuals around the world. Individuals who, in theory, could decide the fate of the world with a single decision. The red button is more than just a metaphor. It's a symbol of the immense power that lies in the hands of a few and the potential for destruction that comes with it. It's a reminder of the fragility of our world and the responsibility that comes with possessing such power. And so, we come back to our original question. Who has the power to decide the fate of the world and would they press the button? So what happens after the button is pressed? What could possibly happen next? Well, let's delve into the realm of possibilities. It's not a pleasant journey, but it's one that is essential to understand the gravity of this hypothetical scenario. The moment the red button is pressed, it triggers a chain of events that unfolds at a terrifying speed. Within a matter of minutes, a nuclear missile is launched, soaring high into the sky with a destination set on causing unimaginable destruction. The immediate aftermath is devastating. A nuclear explosion has a power that's hard to comprehend. It's not just the blast that causes damage. The heat from the explosion can ignite fires in a wide radius, causing an inferno that engulfs everything in its path. The shock waves can flatten buildings and structures, turning cities into rubble within seconds. The immediate death toll is high, but sadly, this is just the beginning. The nuclear fallout that follows is perhaps even more dangerous. This is a cloud of radioactive particles that is dispersed into the atmosphere by the explosion. 
these particles can be carried by wind and rain, spreading contamination over a vast area. This fallout can cause acute radiation sickness, leading to a slow and painful death for those exposed. But, the impact isn't just on humans, the environmental consequences are equally dire. The explosion and subsequent fallout can severely damage ecosystems, leading to a loss of biodiversity. Plants and animals are exposed to high levels of radiation, causing mutations and death. Then there's the nuclear winter. This is a theory that suggests the smoke from the fires caused by the explosion could block out the sun's rays leading to a drop in global temperatures. This could cause a mini ice age, disrupting agriculture and leading to widespread famine. And let's not forget the societal impact. The destruction of cities and infrastructure would cause a breakdown in society as we know it. The survivors would have to deal with the loss of loved ones, the destruction of their homes and the collapse of their communities they would have to learn to survive in a world that is drastically changed. So, when we talk about pressing the red button, we're not just talking about a single action, we're talking about setting off a chain of events that could potentially end life as we know it. We're talking about a world that is left in ruins, a world that is struggling to survive, a world that is drastically changed. The aftermath of pressing the button is catastrophic, leaving us with a world that is drastically changed. The apocalypse has rules, believe it or not and they're worth knowing. While the idea of a nuclear apocalypse is daunting, understanding the basic principles can provide some semblance of control. Let's dive into these so-called rules that could guide us through the unthinkable. Firstly, let's talk about immediate actions. In the event of a nuclear explosion, your initial reaction should be to find shelter. This isn't just to protect from the initial blast, but also from the subsequent fallout, which can be just as if not more deadly. Fallout is a mixture of radioactive particles that rain down from the sky after a nuclear blast. It's invisible, and it's lethal, so staying indoors is crucial. Now, not all shelters are created equal. The safest places are those with thick walls and few windows. Concrete or brick buildings, basements, or even the centermost part of your house can provide substantial protection. The key is distance and shielding. The more barriers between you and the radioactive particles, the better. Once you're in your shelter, stay put. The most dangerous fallout is during the first few hours after an explosion, so hunkering down for at least 24 hours is crucial. And remember, communication will likely be down, so don't panic if you can't get in touch with loved ones right away. Long-term survival strategies are more complex and depend largely on the scale of the disaster. Food and water will be of utmost importance. In the initial stages, rely on pre-packaged foods and bottled water. Later, any food or water sourced from the outside will need to be decontaminated. And finally, remember that survival isn't just about physical well-being. Mental and emotional resilience will be just as critical. Staying calm, working together, and maintaining hope can be the difference between giving up and pushing through. Knowing the rules could be the difference between survival and, well, not. So in the face of the unthinkable, arm yourself with knowledge. It could be your greatest weapon. We've discussed a lot today from the hypothetical scenario to the possible outcomes and the rules of the apocalypse. We delved into the complexities of the red button, that ominous symbol of finality. We explored the potential outcomes, the destruction, the survival, the new world that could emerge from the ashes. We also talked about the rules of the apocalypse, the ironclad laws that could dictate the end of the world as we know it. We pondered on the weight of choice, the burden of responsibility, and the ripple effects of a single decision. In reflecting upon this scenario, it's essential to think about our actions. What would you do if a siren sounded in your city? Would you choose to act or hide? Would you follow the rules or break them? These are questions worth considering. Remember, this is a hypothetical scenario, but it's always good to be prepared. So tell us in the comments, what would you do?